The pipe heater consists of a pipe presented with a black line here and the heating thread that is inside the pipe along its axis presented here in red. When we have a functional heater, the first condition is that the heating thread must not be interrupted and the second condition is that it must not be in the contact with the outer pipe. To determine the functionality of the heater, we will use a ohm meter and measure the resistance of the heating thread itself. That's the first thing we need to do. Another thing we need to do, as shown in the picture below, is to check if the heating thread is not somewhere in contact with the outer pipe. Any contact with the outer pipe indicates a malfunction of the heater. By measuring the resistance of the heater itself, the heating thread itself, we determine its functionality. We will use the heater resistance pattern, which is presented here, and it says that the resistance is equal to the quotation of the square of the voltage and power of the heater itself. So, for a 1500 watt heater, we expected resistance of 35 ohms. This is calculated when the square of the voltage, the voltage between phase conductor and neutral conductor is 230 watts, is divided by 1500 volts. So, for a 1500 watt heater, we expect to measure a resistance of about 35 ohms. In the second example, for a 2500 watts heater, we expect a resistance of 21 ohms. Power of the heater between these two values will have a resistance somewhere between previously mentioned values. We will now practically show how we test the functionality of the pipe heaters. Here we have three heaters whose functionality we need to determine. We have seen from this calculation that the resistance of the heaters is somewhere in the range of about 15 ohms to about 40 ohms. So we will take out multimeter and adjust to measure the resistance and a range of 200 ohms is enough for us. We will measure the resistance of the first heater. It shows 19.5 ohms. This indicates that the heater has a chance to be working properly. We still need to check that it isn't in contact with the metal part of the cover, as worker says, breaking through the mass. What we need to know is that during this kind of experimentation we need to scratch well in order to make good contact. We see that there is no contact between the spiral heating thread and the cover between the pipe itself, which indicates the functionality of this heater. We move the range to be much higher resistance and test the heater again. We still see that the resistance is infinite, so this heater is functional. Let's get back to the scheme again. If we have a case where there is an interruption in the heater, we will present it like this, because we don't see what is happening inside. If the heating thread is cut, which we have now simulated here in the figure, this meter would show infinite resistance, which means that it is actually cut. This would be shown on a display with the number 1 to the left. We will examine another heater. We test between the beginning and the end of the heating thread. I see the resistance is infinite, so that the heater, as in the first picture, now we have an interruption. It is not necessary to test the contact with the cover. It is all good, there is no contact with the cover, but we have registered an interruption and this heater is defective due to the interruption that occurred with it. The heating thread must not come with a contact with the cover, that would be unacceptable situation for us. This is called mass breakout. We will try to examine completely this heater here. Now we measure resistance. We will now reduce the scope. So, 26, 27 ohms. The first measurement indicates that the heater is functional, so it is not interrupted, but we must also check that the heating thread is not somewhere in contact with the cover. We have to scratch well, and here we see another unacceptable situation, that we have contact between the heating thread and the cover, which indicates that the heater is faulty. During the first measuring of the resistance of the heating thread itself, the heater seemed to be functional. Therefore, due to the contact to the cover, the heater must be taken out of use. When such fault occurs on the heater, the first thing we notice is the tripping of the RCD or the residual current device or the protective device of the differential current. 